Shout out our sponsors, GW Competitions. They run regular draws for you to win different prizes from cash to Rolexes to cars and all sorts. It's all legit and the draw is run through the Google number generator. And the prize is delivered the next day and if it's cash, it's transferred the same day. The draws are run on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. And you've got to be in it to win it. podcast we've got a special guest today none other than pound sterling how are you today man i'm good my brother i'm good yourself <sighs> better than i can be to be fair like i feel good life feels really good at the moment so. yeah there's a lot to be thankful for you know like that 100%. things are good at the moment we're back outside and all of that kind of stuff yeah, and more this week, freedom, freedom day freedom week so is that what is that what they're calling it that's what they're calling it freedom week so okay i mean let's go back so you're someone that i remember growing up mm-hmm. and I'm assuming you're a bit older than me. Mm. <laughs> and about, like, I remember growing up and seeing you on Channel U days. Yeah. But I mean, before we even get to that, like, where's your background? Where are you from? What, heritage, area? Heritage, what? area, everything. Well, my heritage, my parents are both Caribbean. Yeah. Um, my mum's UK born Caribbean, and my grandparents on that side are from Grenada. My mum's, my dad's side, Jamaica. My dad was born in Jamaica, yeah. came to England when he was around 15. Yeah. And yes, and so on. Um, area wise, I've moved around. I've always been Lewisham Borough. Mm. I lived in Catford for uh, until I was around 14. Mm. No, no, I'm lying. Until I was about 15, 16. Yeah. And then uh, lived in Lewisham for uh, till I was like early 20s. Then I've lived Forest Hill, Sydenham, wherever. You understand? Mm. Like, I've been. I've always been around that bit. How How was your so early childhood? Did you, was it a thing that where your both parents were there, siblings? Uh, but like you, you times, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you times. My parents are together. My parents are still together now. Yeah, yeah. So um, them times there, yeah, it was just yeah, we was just in the house, normal. How do you think that having that solid foundation or having both your parents together? Because we know we we hear a lot of people make excuses about it, like oh my dad wasn't around, and so, but having that solid foundation, having both mom and dad as an example, how did that sort of help you in your life, if it did at all? It, it helps. It helps, even if you don't realize it helps. It's you see that the you see that base, yeah. you see that base of like yeah they're both there, mm. and you know might, that might give you an incentive in life to look at the situation and be like oh, um, ideally that's what you should try and do, mm. but you know it was, in, it, was, it was different like it weren't the greatest of flipping childhoods you understand yeah. what I'm saying like you know it goes old school strict of Jamaican dad, you know it goes so I left home early okay. but um, yeah other than that. I can't say they weren't food on the table. I can't say they didn't they didn't do everything within their means to make sure that, you know, I would get the best start in life and things like that, because they did. So yeah, they were they were there, but yeah, other than that, I moved that young. Yeah. How was you so academically at school? But them days like you man time. Yeah. yeah, I was real smart still. Yeah. I was a clever youth. Um I could read so they tell me anyway, like I could read when I was free. Like right. I could read like books when I was free. Um I passed exams like to go to the best schools. Like my parents would when they could afford it, like when I was young in um, like early, like five to like nine, ten, they paid for me to go to a private school mm-hmm. and um, until they couldn't afford it no more. Then they made me pass exams. I took the exams at like the 11 plus, I batted that up and um, got into a net school, but they dropped the ball there because like, you know, parents don't think how we think now in them times. Like there, was, there weren't enough black youths there. So I got expelled like within like a year. But okay. I was getting, I, I would always get, I think for my left, my first primary school, like I was happier there, innit? So yeah. I think for my left, for my left there, uh, yeah, from then I just used to fight. Yeah. I used to fight, like, if any kind of the racist talk, I'm fighting. Yeah. Any kind of anything, I'm fighting. Then, like I said, they sent me to that school in the end, I got expelled, like, at, like, 11. Okay. I got expelled at 11 for selling ganja still. Okay, at that young, that yeah, young age? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, who introduced it? Say again? Who introduced it to you? What? I can't speak there. No, no, go say, <laughs> say it with your chest, man. <laughs> he introduced that to you. Introduced Ganja to me. Yeah. To, I kind of just stumbled. I just stumbled yeah. upon it. Like, you know, uh, I was a, a family members yeah. and I stumbled upon, like, um, barrels. Okay. Like, just full of Ganja. Mm. Like, there was, like, three of them. 
literally, you know, like the barrels that you send yard. Yeah. So it was just full up of ganja. So, you know, as a young boy, you know, I, I, I dipped my hands in and just, you know, as much as I could carry in each hand, I just took out and then mm. went to school and went and sold that still. So, I mean, besides the ganja issue and getting spoiled for fighting people who are racist, it seemed to be like a comfortable household where food's on the table, mum and dad are there, you're quite intelligent, you're passing your exams. At what point then was it that you had to get kicked out of the house or you left the house? No, I never got kicked out, still I left. Yeah. I left, but like the ins and outs and all of that are a bit personal, like to the fam, so yeah. we won't really go into all of that, but yeah. I just left. Sometimes you have to leave and just go and be a man. How like old were even you? though I was just turned 16 maybe, yeah. but I was one of the youngest in my year, so maybe I was 15. Yeah. But um, yeah, sometimes whether you know it or not, as a young boy, you're becoming a man. Mm. And someone has to make a move to kind of initiate changes within a household and kind of stand on your own two feet and show that you're a man. Because not necessarily the way that your parent thinks the way it needs to be ruled. It might not sit well with you. You have to find your own lane. You understand what I mean? So me finding my own lane and me kind of breaking the cycle of how my household was running at the time, I chose to go out just to walk out the door. Yeah. And I never came back. And how was you sort of at the time making a living for yourself? Uh, them times there when I first left, I went to my grands. So it weren't terrible. Like no one was giving me no money. Mm. But it's not like I had to come up with some big rent or nothing like that, you know. But them times, yeah, I live off my wits. I live mm. off my wits. I found my feet. Put it that way, I found my feet. And yeah, started to make some odds and ends for myself to, you know. So how, how was the sort of the, the road life for you at this point then? Because being 16 at the time, going off to live on your own world with your, with, with your nan. Yeah, living Lewisham with them, yeah. So me being from Peckham, mm. we were kind of told everyone from Lewisham are ghetto boys. So everyone was labelled ghetto boys. Was that the case or...? No, nah, it, never, it wasn't even like that them times there. Like, firstly, when I was at my mum's and wherever, like, we had our set like, around the corner, like up in Catford there. And um, we were just from that area. Yeah. But then, don't get me wrong, there was man in the set that was ghetto boys. Mm. Couple man in the set that was ghetto boys. But we had a man in the set that was a Peckham man as well. Okay. You see what I'm trying to say? He'd moved from Peckham and he was on the set as well. He was a little older than us. He showed us certain things. He was real slick. That's when mm. I knew Peckham man are slick, you know? Because mm. he was a smart guy, blood. He would, do, he would be the one where, when certain things are going on, and say, you know, you're young, you're in a foolishness and everyone's about to get nicked for something. And like, the feds are all following man one direction. He's the one that's going to break off from everyone and sit at the bus stop okay. with one white lady <laughs> and end up not getting nicked. Mm. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, he was a very clever, clever fucker, that one. But um, what was I saying before you, before you said that? Yeah, the ghetto boy thing. So no, nah, and then Lucian, like again, like you have your, you'd have your own set of peeps. Like when I was in Lucian, I had my own set of peeps. Yeah. So, no, it weren't necessarily everyone was ghetto boys. The ghetto boys was the ghetto boys then. You understand? It weren't the whole illusion was ghetto boys. Man knew ghetto boys that was from around the way in them times there, but no, not everyone was a ghetto boy, bro. I was never a ghetto boy, and none of my lot was, that lot then was ever ghetto boys. We just knew okay. the man then. So, I mean, you're now 16. Mm. Are you thinking about college? Did you end up going to college? Or? I was, yeah, yeah, you're bringing me back there. Um, I was in, when I first left, I was in sixth form. Okay. But now I left. Because, uh, you know, did, probably because there's no parent then to say like, oh, you got to go, you got to go. And yeah. also because it was like, rather than having that strict, 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 you know, it's like, I'm out here now, innit? Like, mm. And there's things to be done. I've got to do, I've got to make money, I've got to survive, I've got to, you understand? So, yeah, that was that. So I left college after like a year. What was, it, what was the actual aspiration of being, being a young, I'm taking a little bit further again, let's say nine, ten. What was the actual aspiration? I want to be... At this what age? When you're nine, ten years old, what's aspiration compared to when you're 16, thinking about what you want to be? I don't know. I, I, at them ages there, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't even think about what yeah. I wanted to be. Bro. I think I was just like any other you. I knew I was clever, but it's not like I was a study. I didn't, like, I didn't hit books like that. Yeah. I, was always gonna, I think I was always going to be into whatever I was into. I was always mm. going to be a bit rebellious. I didn't hit books like that. I was, like, I was naturally clever. Yeah. That's what I'd say. Naturally clever. Like, some things were booked to, but for the most part, naturally clever. Like, like, my granddad for one, and Maxi Priest. And Maxi Priest, also yeah, yeah. he used to live with my aunt. Oh, like, yeah. He used to live with my grands for a while. And them, and them man all used to call me professor. That's what he used to call me when I was running around the house. Because mm. obviously you go and visit your granny. 
they managed to call me Professor Carr, smart like that. So, but I didn't really think like, oh yeah, I want to be this, or oh yeah, I want to be that. It's just that I just knew that when my granddad would come and say, hey, what's this time's that? I could answer the question. You, like, you know the vibe, because you're Congolese, I know you know the setting. So yeah, just that kind of stuff. But no, I weren't really thinking academically. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I always had that streak in me, I don't know. Mm. Mm. But in terms of just like saying that I want to be a performer, I want to be a, a, a footballer, mm. nothing like that. Every youth says they want to be a footballer. Was you any good? I weren't going to be a pro level, so I never really thought in my head I'm going to be. I was with man them that, were, that I knew like them man could be footballers. It's a, it's a dream for every youth, but no, it wasn't mm. that the performer wears. I don't even know, blood. I, don't even, I didn't even really think like that when I really, when I really look back on those years, I weren't really thinking. Like, oh, this is what I'm going to be, this is what I'm going to be. No, I was just when, living. So the, the nickname Pound Sterling, was that always your nickname? And how did that sort of come about? Or is it self-evident, basically? That nickname came later, like 18, yeah, 17, 18, 19. That came yeah. into play. That's another chapter where, like, obviously, like, I've moved again. Like, I was only at my grand's for like a year and a half. Yeah. Then, like, 18, I've got... I connect and I've managed to get myself a flat and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I had to start making some money here and there, some odds and ends, you know. So I started doing bits and pieces just to, um, yeah, just to, to be honest, to start with, it was to eat initially, bro. Because yeah. when I moved, I was broke. See, yeah. when I first time out by myself, like in the world, like in my, um, in my flat, I lost bare weight. Yeah. Like, the, sh- the shops was far. You couldn't, you couldn't get to, you know, you know what I mean? Mm. The shops was far, like, see once a certain time, I was up like on a rope. And like, you see once the fucking 10 o'clock come, mm. it's a myth, the shop shut at 10 anyway. But even if I just wanted to go shop, the shop's either down the hill, and it's, uh, by the time you walk and come back, it's like a 45 minutes, or you're bopping to Forest Door, which is a, just a dumb bop. So I was losing bare weight. I didn't have money like that. And yeah, so I just was like, you know what, fuck this, I've got to make some money, blood. Yeah. So, yeah, I just started, you know, doing little bits and pieces, you know, boys would be boys, making some money, making ends meet. And then, yeah, it took off quick. I was in a fortunate position where I was amassing a good amount of money in a short period of time. I continued to accumulate money. And, um, yeah, my guy Lex used to call me money. Mm. Always used to say, yeah, money or G money or J money or pounds and this, that, the other. And from then, yeah, it kind of stuck. Then others would call me it. And, yeah, it kind of ran like that. So in regards to sort of music at the time, who is what your influences that would you kind of listen to? Man was just listening to fucking Jay-Z all the time, blood. Mm. That was who I was listening to and being like, this nigga understands the struggle that I'm going through right now. You know, <laughs> the ones like, man's eating, man's making, but I'm living, I'm living. And, uh, don't get me wrong, as far as who, who I'm listening to, as far as to get it, because those original Jay-Z albums, you know the original yeah. Jay-Z albums, like they was all like the come up kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm listening to other music as well. Like, I was listening to Bear the Locks and all of that. Mm. But as far as who I'm listening to and being like, right. Well, I remember when I heard it and I heard this guy, um, I heard that Lucky Me and them kind of yeah. Jay-Z tunes. I see all girls with ulterior motives. That's why I'm 20 plus year old, no sons, no daughters, all them kind of, all them mm. kind of things. I'm relating to that in the moment, even though I'm probably 19, you understand? Or um, cough up a long way I'm from Marcy son and all them tunes, ain't nothing nice. Cause I'm living a certain way. So I'm relating to that more. Yeah. So that locks, but I'd roll out and make money to the to the heartless crew and that yeah. like, and laugh. Yeah. Mm. So when did you take the decision to start rapping yourself? All my friends were going to jail. Yeah. So I needed to change. We needed a change of direction. Cause see with me, yeah, anything I was doing or anything I was into, I was always like very I want the team to do good. Yeah. You understand? It's always been my out. I want the team to do good. Mm. When I'm talking like, if I go back to what you said, when I'm on my mountain bike, riding around Lucian and I'm doing little bits and pieces, whatever, I can't remember what I was doing, whatever. I thought was still, I want the team to do good. How can I make everyone get involved and us, yeah. and us eat? So when I've moved up now, and I'm now I'm like, I'm a, becoming a man and my name, nickname's my nickname, still, I want the team to do well. So I'm, I'm, I'm breaking off, man, and not breaking off, cause, but I, I'm putting man in position. Yeah. You understand, to kind of do okay. You understand, just like giving them advice and stuff. Let's be clear on this, like, I'm not talking about any, like, criminal activities and stuff, because what you lot have to understand when you lot come on here, like, sometimes you lot are saying stuff that might 
incriminate yourself. Mm. I've never been a criminal, so I can't speak that. So when I say doing bits and pieces, I'm just talking about just using my wits to amass money. It could be anything, you know, I might be saying to the man, then let's set up a little car wash or whatever, you understand? We ain't talking like crime, because obviously in England, you have to understand, like, if it's a crime that's been committed that you haven't been convicted for, and you're talking off your mouth, there's a strong possibility, you, you know, mm -hmm. you can still get nicked for it. Or if, or if you're talking about someone doing something to you, like if you're gonna say, oh yeah, when Johnny T when Johnny T stabbed me four times down the road, Johnny T, even if it was 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and the police know you got stabbed up, they can still go and nick Johnny T. You mm -hmm. understand? So just to be clear, I'm not talking about criminal activity. I'm just saying when I was doing what my thing, just to try and earn in whichever way, selling T-shirts, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, um, I would always incorporate the team. I'd always make sure like. He's eating. He's eating. He's eating. He's eating. He's eating. So back to your original question. When some of my guys, majority of my guys, because I moved with a, a all different kind of guys again, yeah. like my set now, again, like I've had my set, I've got, I had a couple of jail men that I'd move with mm. regular. There's Pecker men as well yeah. still that I'd move with. And they was always in and out. But then I'd have my other guys as well. They're starting to go away, go away. And then my more distant guys, you know, we grew up, we know a bagger man. Yeah. Some are closer than others, but everyone's kind of going away. And I was just looking at it and saying, "Raw, something has to break the cycle here. Mm. You understand? So I was like, I've lived a mad life in between this. Because by here and then, I think I'm like 20, maybe 23. Mm. I'm like, I've lived a mad life. For, there's no you I knew that had lived like me between 17 to 23, 24. Yeah. I'm living crazy. Life's hectic. It's all going on. A million stories to tell. Let me just record a mixtape. We open up studio first. Let's just open up a studio, do that, and see if um, see what goes on. So I'm talking. This is before. This is the prequel to mm -hmm. the where you would think like, oh, I'm really going for it music-wise. The mixtape side of things was just um, let me go and record. Yeah. I'll make the CD beat robbery. We'll nick our concept. We'll teeth beats. We'll call it beat robbery. We'll put it out. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna rap on it. I've never rapped in my life. Yeah. Never, never, mm. never said to man I'm gonna be a rapper. Mm. The girls used to say it to me in the end. Yeah. You think you're a rap star? Because of the way I moved. Yeah. I was extra, you know what I mean? Mm. I was an extra kind of done. Mm. So I'd be flamboyant in the way I behave, probably only equivalent to rap videos. Yeah. So when I'm doing my extra shit, they're gonna say, oh, you think you're a rap star? But they don't understand, maybe for them or maybe that, was making it a self-fulfilling prophecy, the way mm. they were saying it. So now when I've actually gone to do it, I'm just been like, yeah, I'm gonna do these mixtapes. I don't think many of those people weren't surprised, but everyone else was. So anyway, I've recorded them. Um, I've gone to studio to record one song. I think in about four months, I recorded about 50. Okay, wow. Because it was just pouring out of my skin. Mm. It's like, I'm, I've been living this way for so long. Every day is chaos. Every day is chaos, Bobby. See, when I'm talking before this, because I've glazed over. I'm going to say every day is chaos. I'm living like, I can't even articulate to you properly what, was, what it was like, mm. but it's chaos. You understand? Like anything's happening at any moment, as any, anyone was in the environment. So when I started talking on it, or t talking on what I'd seen, as I say, as what I'd seen, not firsthand, all my CDs are just what I've seen and witnessed, and it's not firsthand, I don't know nothing about nothing. It just flowed out my body, about mm. 50 out. But then during the course of it, we caught a case as well. Mm. Caught a case. Old Bailey. You know when you see Old Bailey, it, was, it weren't looking great, but then thanks God, you know, it all got cleared up and it was obviously the wrong people and that case went away. Yeah. And I just looked at it like, raw, like something has to change. Yeah. We're already kind of going with this thing. My guy's in jail. I started just formulating a plan. While they was in jail, my main guy, he was coming out. He had about, yeah, he, he got small, but I think he got like, a, he got a two and a, two and a quarter, mm. yeah? So I knew he was coming out soon. I just started formulating the plan. Yeah. You're gonna do music, you're gonna do video. I started telling man, man then was like, oh, videos, uh, pit bulls on the estate. Yeah. I said, no, not even that. We're gonna do it up big. Let's, mm. let's put some money behind it and be different. And yeah, that's where it came from. Cause I'll, 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 I'll be honest and I, I, I need you to not take offense, right? Please do. When, I first heard your song, I could tell maybe that you only had just started rapping, mm. but there was something about how you done it, which was catchy, and also the imagery that made me want to be a fan and follow. That oh, makes no, sense. no, you can say do, that do, all do, day long. Do, do you get that? Of course, but rewind that video, you see me wearing a t-shirt that says, I'm not a rapper. That's yeah. how I ended the video. Mm. I'm not a rapper, bro. Yeah. I never came in that door on some, 
I'm a lyrical genius. Mm. I came in that door and some me and my man them, this is we're living a certain way. Yeah. Fuck it. It was and as I said, not to cut you, it's like Go ahead, it's similar to you and the guy from Northwest, Podgy Figures, where I'll say Shout out Podgy Figures. Yeah, I'll say that these guys, the way they're doing videos, it's like no one else doing the videos. Their videos are lifestyle and that's what was engaging me and to the point that you feel like, oh, what are these men doing? Like, you want to mm. be involved with yeah, the story. Was, that was, yeah, that was the, the idea behind it. The idea behind it was my videos are going to look better than other people. That's mm. how I'm going to make inroads. I was, make, I was mad confident in it. Mm. It wasn't an issue. And I knew my niggas would love it because mm. I know what comes with it. Yeah. So solid and point had, had, had set the bar and done what they're doing. But in my mind, I knew what comes with it. My man, them like to enjoy life. We like, they like gal them around and this, that, the other. So to, to kind of document I just wanted to document a, a, a chapter in time for my mm, people. Mm. And that first video you're talking about was just a party, bro. My, mm. my guy in, that's all over the video, he just came out of jail like four days, a week before. Was the first video, this is my, for my dog? Yeah, was that was the one? first one, blood. That's just, that was the first video, like he'd just come home. And in that, it's bearing my man them just there, just enjoying and just whatever. It was a celebration. Like I say, we had, that's why we was Chris Darling and, cause I knew no one was really doing it like mm. that. Bear Chris Darling, Bear Dom Peace, Fire breathers, bro. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It was just a statement. It was just a statement. Trying to make a change and change yeah. the um, the repetitive nature of man going jail, coming out. I was just saying, let's try something different, bro. Mm. Let's just do something different. And before I even find that you had uh, an, an Instagram, I posted that actual video, but I think maybe two years ago, I was posting sort of UK mm. underrated bangers. I appreciate and that, bro. And I put bro. that up and people were like, oh my God, oh, Pound Sterling. So do, 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 do you consider that song as a classic? Because I, I think it, it is in terms of, especially the whole Channel U period, uh, period and I know there's if, even a song coming out. I mean, there's a documentary, documentary coming yeah, out. Yeah, I'm on that, I'm on that. Yeah. Listen, if you know about it, it's undeniable, of course. Mm. Of course it's a classic because it, if you was around in that moment in time, mm. You were seeing that all over your TV non-stop. So of course it's a it's a classic. And people felt it. And it's just it was just ahead of its time. I remember the imagery, it got banned six times from Channel U. Oh, wow. I had to keep sending back edits to Riddy, Ricky Blue. Mm. They, they were like, what is this? You understand? Like, what mm. is this? On our screens, what brothers in the UK can't be. Nah, no one's no one believed that niggas was living like that in England. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? No one in the UK is living like that. Mm. But it was just, yeah, it was what it was. So yeah, I'd put that as a classic, bro. I mean, after it sort of come out, what was the reception for you at the time? Did you think like, wow, well, everyone's feeling this and then I'm going to keep doing more? No, nah, I was still, I was still like in the midst of everything else. Yeah. It never phased me, bro. I was more, I was more, the music was like, a, I don't know, bro. I was talking, when I was doing for my dogs and I was talking to my enemies down mm. the lens, bro. Mm. Like if, if you look in my eyes when I'm doing that video, you can see a level of, like I was talking to my enemies. Just I was like basically looking down the camera and telling them, man, don't fuck. Mm. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. That was more the energy, and I was still in the midst of things, so I didn't, I weren't phased. Mm. I came into everything you saw in that video and everything you saw going on the people, the this, that, the other, the imagery, the jewels, the this, that, the, it was, I didn't leave and put them down. They were mine, you understand? Mm. Them times, they it was just me, mm. you understand? The new X5, which was a big deal at the time, that was me, you mm. understand? So it weren't. I weren't really in the music. I didn't really give a shit about yeah. music, if I'm honest. It was just more something for the mandem. I didn't really care. I mean, looking at how the music industry has sort of transpired now, is there a thing that where you said, oh, maybe I should have kind of stayed in it a little bit longer in terms of doing other things around it? Nah. It What's for me won't miss me. Yeah. I never felt like that. Mm. I was you'd be that, 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 that miserable guy. Yeah. I was, but I've always had peace of mind. Like, it was, I was never that passionate in it of where I was like, ah, oh, Rah, I want to be the top rapper. It wasn't even that, bro. Mm. My vision was, I'm going to do what I'm doing. Like, and I'll spearhead it for my lot. We'll, we'll, we'll carve out a piece of what's going on. But as far as, we was already do, I was already doing well in life and we were doing well in life. Um, so I never feel regret in that. Because I think I've done what I'm supposed to do at each stage of my life. If anything, it was my brother that was going to be the guy. I would have, I would have put him on. That was my vision put my brother on mm. and let him go, because he was the rapper. He's the, he's the bars man. Mm. I wasn't really, I was never a rapper, bro. I could, ju I could just put it together. And wh why, why didn't he continue? My brother passed away, bro. Yeah, yeah, I lost my little brother, bro. Like, uh, probably uh, two months after the first video I put him on yeah. TV with, I lost my little bro. So after that, the party's done. Yeah. So to me, if the party's done in that sense, like, 
I did a couple more bits just to fulfill like some things that he asked me for. Like, mm. He asked me before how oh, you got because I wouldn't do collabs. Mm. I was so indoctrinated in a certain life mm. where we grew up where it's like us lot. So it was just me and my lot. I didn't know how to um, mingle out. and it wasn't even reaching out because I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't reach out. Yeah. Cause the man was reaching out to me, bro. Okay. Like the man was reaching out to me, but I just didn't know how to. It was, I was so consumed by a certain lifestyle that it's like me and this circle. That's what keeps us safe. Yeah. So, oh, I always used to say this thing with my lot, like, it's us and fuck everyone outside of yeah. us. But it took long for me to get out of that mentality because yeah. that's, that's not a proactive mentality. That's yeah. not, you understand, that's not going to make things happen. But when you're in a certain lifestyle, when you're just on the road and moving around, that's what keeps you safe. Yeah. But now, I, it took time to flip in. I don't know what you want to call it. You might say it's PTSD, whatever. It took time to shake that off mm. and civilize myself, yeah. you understand? But once my brother passed, yeah, I did, I did like a couple CDs where I did all the collabs that you asked me for. Like yeah. I, I did Tune Skepta, Blade, Jaja, Soul, Zay, you name, yeah, yeah. That, yeah just to I mean, that. obviously not to dwell on that because there's something um, that's personal to you. I mean, to, 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 to have someone, I guess he looked up to you as, mm. as an older brother. And of course. You, you, I, I'm assuming you'd feel Quite responsibility for Yeah, it's like my son, like, yeah, them so men are like my sons. Like, with that, was it a thing that where it made you just want to quit everything? Like, was life just different for you at the time, or did it oh, galvanise no. you to no, push no, more? No, 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 it never made me, I've never quit everything because there's responsibility and I've got, I've got kids. Yeah. So, what it, what it made me have to do is just, yeah, like you said, galvanise, you, you, like, must process and go for what's going on, but my people need me, my family's going to need me, my sons need me to continue to be the, 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 the man that I am. Yeah. So if anything, I stood taller, I carried a lot of weight on my back, but I never, no, I never stopped. Like even, I've got like, I record, like I said, I recorded two mixtapes after I recorded, and that's outside of what is going on. Mm. Like I was recording bits and pieces. So no, I never, I never, I never stopped and like, maybe I should have, but I never stopped and really mm. took time to, in that moment to um, really grieve. But mm. self pity wasn't an option for me because yeah. in my family, a lot of people looked to me as the guy. So, and in my team, a lot of people looked at me as the guy. So I just stand up, you know? Yes, I saw also that you, um, martial arts, that, well, what did you call it? Yeah, 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 martial arts, Muay Thai, is, is all of that, that stuff. Is that something that you done from as a teen, or is it something that you done later on in life? No, I've been doing that. I was doing that from my, shout out my friend, White Tommy, yeah. that, Pulled up on me one time, I was in Lewisham, I was on Lehigh Road, he pulled up, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, nah. He's like, go get your bag, let's go training. I was like, mm. what training? He goes, I'm going Muay Thai. I was like, what's that? He goes, I'm going Muay Thai. He goes, just come with me, it's like kickboxing. I went with him up to Kedles in Alperton. Just loved it, bro. Loved it, did it for like, from then, I've done it on and off continuously since then. But now, nah, but I stopped going classes once I got to like 19, started making a, a, a bit of money. Um, I started training one on one, like, and I've kind of done it ever since, bro. And what, what, what sort of discipline do you think that teaches you? It gives you, it's a lot. Of, if, discipline is an essential word. It gives you a lot of discipline as far as um, you have a level of calm. Mm. You have a level of calm in certain situations. Um, it, it, it make you confidence-wise. It will do wonders for your confidence because you have a level of. You look at certain situations and start. You'll, you'll feel confident. Like, my guy, I've got a guy that says to me all the time now, he watches things, because I do the same, so I laugh when he said it. He'll watch things like, I don't know, like the punch up the guys was having on the side of the motorway yeah. the other mm -hmm. day. You'll watch things like that, and he says to me, I look at them things and I think, I, I, I'm so glad I couldn't fight. Mm -hmm. You know them ones? It'll give you a level of confidence. Discipline wise, it's been very therapeutic for me, I'll say that. It's very therapeutic, because I'm not going to lie, as calm as I sit here and I'm this, when I go off, mm -hmm. you know, I ain't gonna say that there ain't parts of my house where you might see at times where I've been going through some things years ago. Now, not where I used to just punch holes up, or mm. punch up banisters and all of that kind of stuff. So it, it's, it's very therapeutic for me. Yeah. It's very therapeutic because obviously I've got pain in me. Like, you understand? We've all got pain to do with. So I find that's, it's, a, it's a great release for me as far as pain and just whatever's building up inside of me. Yeah. So yeah, I'd recommend it for any you, any up on, anyone that just wants to, you know, anyone that's got their kids, whatever. It's very, it's a great discipline to have. 
And had, had, had you kind of utilised those sort of skills in, in regards to fatherhood as well now, because you, you've got two sons, right? Yes. So had you sort of utilised the skills you learned over there and transpired into being a father? What, the skills I we learnt where? At? From, from all time, the discipline it teaches you and then what you can sort of teach your children as well. In general, I just teach my, I try to teach my son just in general from life experiences. As far as Muay Thai and that, I encourage them to be involved in those kind of activities. Like, it's funny, because yesterday I was, throwing, I was, it's funny you say, I was, I was showing my youngest son, because he was practicing uh, uh, a jumping scissor knee. Those who didn't know will know what that is. Now, he's probably just seen that on the game, because he plays UFC, yeah. but he can do them things because he's athletic. So then I started showing him how to throw a, 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 a a jump knee from the standing position. Yeah. For those that know, they'll get what I'm saying. Mm. But the point I'm trying to say is, and then I showed him how it translates. I was like, yeah. this is how it translates. If a man comes up, you understand? So I showed them skills that I hope in, that might help them in a situation, but I also showed them how important it is to use the brain. Because mm. the brain is the biggest muscle, bro, as far as I'm concerned. So, this is what can get a lot of stuff done. So I want them to be wise, physically strong. That's what I pray. When I say my prayers for my kids at night, the prayer I say is repeated over and over. I always say, I pray that their hearts be pure, their minds be wise and their bodies be strong. I pray that all the time. Yeah. So, and I think that's the blueprint to, to, to raising young boys. And that's all I can, well, there's not much more than that I can do and just guide them in those directions to try and fulfill those things. I mean, I mean that's what I'm gonna go on to now as well, in terms of having young boys in London. Mm -hmm. And we know how we grew up in our areas, and to now, what's going on now with these young kids now. Mm. I remember being in prison and being always fearful for my younger brother, of who course. was 16 at the time. As a father of two mm. boys, how do you sort of deal with that? I guess you just give them the knowledge of what to do, but do you ever have fear because of, of course. their age? Of course. Of course. And I'll tell you something. A man told me this once, because I listen to everything people tell me if they've got something constructive to say. Uh, my guy Gerald, he said to me, because I was, I'm, like you said, it's a fear. And a lot of the stuff when you might be on your kids of like, oh, don't do this, don't do that, and um, this might happen, and we shout at them or whatever. It's our own fears we're putting on to them. Yeah. You understand? Because we know, you know, I know. We come up a certain way. I don't even, let me show you something. I don't even have to ask you to know what your environment is and what coming up is. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And you don't have to ask me certain questions to understand what my environment is and coming up is, because we know. We've all got, could list 20 dead men, mm. 20 mad men, and so on and so forth. 40 men that's got stabbed, you understand? 40 men that stabbed, man. You see what I'm trying yeah. to say? So those things, we never want our children to experience that. I hope that, I've, I've took every fuck, I hope everything that's gone on with me in my life that I've done, my kids will never experience. Yeah. And it's like a, it's like a movie to them. Like mm. things in this interview, they will never hear from me. Yeah. Some, some of the bits and pieces. But I'll just say, guide them in it. Yeah. Guide them, pray, <laughs> and just do what you can. Cause you can't lock them in the house. Mm. You can't lock them in the house. Like my son saying to me yesterday, but he's like, yeah, I'm going, um, West End, me and the man, then we're gonna go West End and go and ride the, the bikes up. What they got? Santander, what is it? The yes, Boris bikes? Yeah, the Boris bikes. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna go up and ride the bikes, rear tear tear. And he's like, yeah, boom. I'm putting on, he's like, yeah, putting on, he's already lacing up the new Jordans <laughs> and them thing there. You know, he's lacing them up for tomorrow. Mm. So I'm like, bro, bro, man, I, you know, <laughs> you know what it was? He's like, what? I was like, man, I, the West End ones, you know. I said, man, no, man, don't want to say it. And he went to me, I don't want to say it. I was like, what? He's like, do you think, what do you think? Do you think that I'm, I'm soft? I said, I don't think you're soft. Mm. I just know the world, it's a cold world out mm. there, bro. And I know, and he turned around to me, he goes, dad, not being funny, but I know more about what's going on out here now than you know about what's going on out here now. <laughs> but I feel, even though that's true to a degree, because things change, mm. but really and truly, it's a rerun. Yeah. Things just go in cycles, cycles. I like. So all we can do is try and give them that knowledge. I never want to hide things I know from yeah. them. I try to just give them, the heads up. That's all we can do. I mean, how, how, how does it work now as well as a as a as a father in regards to? Because me, obviously, got to the point that where I'll just go out, but I used to have to. Oh, Dad, can I go and play out, or can I go out to a certain age? Does it think that way? He has to say, he, he said, "Dad, I'm going out with my friends tomorrow." Or, oh, Dad, um, do you mind if I can go out tomorrow? Man, better call me and ask me, bro. Mm. Come on, we're not letting go of certain old school ways, because mm. them ways there, there's certain things that 
we can't let go of. Mm. So no, nah, he's got to hit me up and say, is it all right if I go to bed? And I'll say, yeah, 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 no problem. Yeah. That's fine. Da, da, da. I'm, if anything, I'm the more lenient one, bro. <laughs> yeah. Mumsy's not really playing them games. Mm. Mumsy's like, the other day, Mum was talking about he's going Brighton with a man them for sleepovers. <laughs> Mum's 15, 16, blood. <laughs> Mumsy weren't really on all of that. Mumsy started talking about, boy, you're not going... And I was like, I'm just, I'm just chill, innit? He mm. hits me up. And I'm just like, who's going? And he's going to me like, that. Dad, it's Brighton, innit? Like, yeah. What's really going on in Brighton? <laughs> but, and I'm laughing. Mm. But I don't want to say too much to undermine. You understand? Yeah. So it is what it is. It is what it is, Bobby, man. It is what it is. I mean, it brings us forward to, I guess, the success of the podcast. Like I said, I, I posted um, the song a couple of years ago. Mm. Didn't tag you because I didn't even know you was on, on, I on, on. I weren't really on, on it. Like, on I weren't really a social media yeah. guy until we were talking. And then obviously, seeing Major Think post up a podcast. Big up Major and Think, I see, AP. I see, yeah, I see. Pastor. I'm like, oh, you're on the podcast. I, like, I think you're the last person I would assume. A lot like, of people said that. I didn't even know what happened to you, where you went. I just remember that tune as I posted it up. So, how did that even come about? And what was the thought process? It's just, bro, I just spent time, yeah. See, when I stopped music and this, that, that, bro, I just spent time just chilling. Like I said, if you listen to the, what we've kind of just documented there, what we've skirted around, we've kind of documented, that's from like 17 to music done, like active. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? One word or other, mm. things going on, bait face, and so on. So, I took some time and just chilled, bro. Like, went on loads of holidays, travelled, did all of that stuff, chilling, and and got myself, took a time. Once my brother passed and I'd taken, like, I'll be real, like, five years just dealing with my mum. My mum lost her youngest son, you understand mm. what I'm saying? The baby, you understand? My mum, my dad, my, my son's growing a piece. I looked at it early and, like, just thought, you know what? This is the lane right now, like, let me just deal with everyone here first. Deal with the immediate family as a priority. Because mm. no disrespect to my old man, that's something I've always knocked heads with him about. Mm. And I don't know if it's a thing in other households as well where sometimes the immediate family gets overlooked and it's yeah. more about auntie and aunt, you know, mm. you see what kind of settings. So my thing was more like, let me just really make sure that my... I'm the rock for all of these people. So now I've given five, six years, seven years of this my next thought process was like, I feel good now. You know, yeah. them ones like, I've given to everyone, but I couldn't live ordinary. Mm. You know, like I can't live, all, like I've done, an, I've, I, used to, I use my Clark Kent Superman analogy a lot, innit? So I've done a lot of Clark Kent in now, innit? Mm. I've done it. I don't want anyone to forget the man Superman out here, bro. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? So it's time for man to make a little renaissance out and come back and like, you know, come back for some of the shit that's mine because mm. I know I'm an original in the thing, you know? No big head thing, but I know I'm an original in the thing. I know I'm a pioneer. Mm. The music side of things I'm cool with, I've never had a problem with stepping away from music. I used to always say, I'm happy. Uh, when gigs come out, I used to say, I'm cool with what's going on as long as he's running it. Yeah. Because I got it, you understand? Mm. I understood. I was calm because I never cared about being the Uno rapper, bro. Yeah. Never an issue, you understand? So now it's time for me to just come back out with something. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm seeing the landscape. I'm watching what's going on and saying, "Raw, I see Drink Champs, the American team. Yeah. I see Nori, like Ra, Nori's there. Um, used to do music, used to be out there a little piece, got good relationships with the man them. And I remember I rang my cousin, Nicky, I was like, Rob, blood, I could do that. And Nicky's like, probably eating at the time. He's like, mm, 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 yeah, probably. <laughs> you know what I mean, man? They're mm. half not really paying attention mm. to what I'm saying. But with me, it's a, it's a seed. But mm. the seed had already come before them because I looked at Posty interviewing gigs. Mm. And no disrespect to Posty, because I fuck with Posty, innit? I watched it and I said, these men don't get it. Yeah. And they're not asking the right questions. They don't get it. They're more interested in passer and gossip, and, which I get, they're media guys. Mm. So they're meant to get to that. But my thought is, if you really know what man, if you really understood what man them come from, and man them are from fucking jungle and this, that, the other, and what's really going on? And now my man's in Russia. I'm watching, mm. I'm watching vi videos on his gigs Instagram of bag of people in Russia jumping up and down. Mm. How mad is that for a Donny from Peckham? Crazy. It's not, 
Yeah. No one asked. No one asked him about nothing like that. Mm. So I'm like, that's what I need to do my thing, you know, yeah. because these men don't really get what it is when you're hypothetically speaking in environments where you're driving and you've got beef mm. and you're driving, you can't carry your whap. So you're driving, you buy a car for 400 pounds. You've got a knife stabbed into the seat between your legs while you drive around and a hammer next to you and, and you're driving because you don't know when you're going to see your up. Then you see your up and he's in front of you at the roundabout. He sees you in the ring. He sees you in his rear view mirror. He knows he's on top. He flies out into the roundabout, crashes his car into another car and carries on squirting because he knows what it is. Mm. These men don't know about them kind of situations and that kind of life. You understand what I'm mm. saying? So me being a man that's heard stories like that about Duns, <laughs> I'm like, I need to talk to these men. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So... That was just my thought process of my thing will be set different. Yeah. So I just came out and was just like, right, but the, the, the turn that is taken with big shouts to my bro Doug is that unintentionally, we're both very like-minded and want to motivate mm. and we want to we wanna inspire. And we're not on no, we're both comfortable in ourselves and we like to run, joke and laugh. And you understand what I'm trying I mean, to how, say how to you? How was the link up with Doug in the first place? Someone you've known for years. I know Doug from around the way and from him doing the Don's thing. Yeah. But we weren't close like that. We just, you know, cool, what's happening, da 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 da. I said from I said I was going to do the thing, I said, I'm going to do it. Because I, I had that concept from a long time. Mm. I said, I'm going to do it. But I said, I need a co host. My cousin Daps. I used to ring him and he'd say, when are you going to do the show? I said, I need a co-host. Yeah. Then one day Daps just rang me and said, I've got the guy, Big Doug. And by chance, I'd been watching Doug the day before, laughing at him on, on the, yeah. the Don's because I always said he's a big character. He was giving me a joke. Mm. I just said to him, yeah, that's perfect. And then from there, we just, met, just said, yeah, this is how it's going to go. And we just banged it out, bro. And what was the uh, reason behind the naming? Winner's talking. Yeah. You know my mentality, bro, because I always say, you see like on my post, I say, winner stays on, winner stays on. That's my mentality. When I'm saying that, I'm saying, I'm going to keep going. Mm. I'm still here. For my dogs came out in 2005, bro. I'm still on. So when I say winner stays on, that's that. So I would have gone with winner stays on. There was already a podcast. And I just said to the man and called it winner's talking. Mm. And I was like, yeah, dope. Done. I mean, did you envisage it will become so solidified as part of the culture as it is so quickly? Or did you think, oh, it'll take time to, 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 to grow? Because it's happened quite a Just like my music, I was very confident. I'm very, always very, when I do certain things, I'm very, I back myself, bro. Yeah. I think it's because of the mentality of everything I've done, I've had to back myself. I've yeah. had to be like, if I do this, it's going to be a success. It's going to be a success. And they people have always said, no, it won't. You can't do that. But I back myself. So with this, it was no different. I won't say... I wasn't prepared for if it didn't. I was ready to be humble. Mm. I was willing to be humble. Mm. I had already said in my mind, I'm willing to be humble to the point of like, if we have to go out there, episode one, and it gets 900 views, it will hurt me a piece, yeah. but I'll humble it. Mandem was ringing me, cause day one, it must've got like, I don't know, say day one, it got like 400 views. Yeah. Mandem was ringing me. Yeah, you know what it is, Pete? Man needs to do ads and <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I'm just ignoring, man. Mm. Because everyone can tell you how to do it, but they've never done it. But thanks God, it made you think and then picked it up. And within a few days, it started firing. Mm. But this is me again, bro. I'll be honest with you. I've never said this anywhere, but in this room, I told my man them, when I was doing it, I told the man them before I said, I said, there's this blog page made you think, I think he fucks with me. Mm. I think he's a fan. Because one thing with me, I've never known how big my fanfare was because yeah. there was no social media and and because I was so anti-social. I said, I think he fucks with me now. I'm confident if we do episode one, I think he'll pick it up and that will help get the ball rolling. Mm. And it was so said, so done. It was a gamble. You understand it was a gamble, but I felt confident that's what would happen and that kind of, yeah, so I, I, oh, yeah, I, 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 I want to touch on made you think for a second because I want to give him his flowers. Give the man his, give the man I, his I've props. Told him, I've told him this as well. Although I've done stuff with Henry Football Club and Blood Brothers and Nike and so on, I say, I mean, I've reached now 32,000 followers on salute, Instagram. Salute, right? salute. I mean, nothing to, to big that up is that I'm saying that, he, I'm willing to say that he's responsible for that. For the amount salute. of times over the last four years, he's reposted my mm. content without even, and that's sent followers to me, which allows me of now course. to do more stuff. Mm -hmm. So... 
he's someone I think is very, very influential. Uh, he probably doesn't even know how influential he is because he can actually bust your thing uh, and make it go. I think at this stage, the conversation that we have, he's starting to know still, <laughs> yeah. but he's humble. Yeah, See, no, he's humble, humble but now he's, he's starting to realise. But I said that to him from early, like, yeah. you need to realise, like, the power. Like, me and him have got a, a good relationship. I said to him, you've got to realise the power that you've got and not to let anyone take advantage of it and whatever. But, yeah, moving from that, now nah, he was an essential part of what, what I did and I didn't rely on it because, like, when he posted me the first place, he didn't post me again for, like, five weeks, but yeah. I told the man them, like, don't worry about that. We, we're we not going to rely on any person. We're going to keep pushing the... I was very surprised at how much love I got. Yeah. I was very surprised at how much... Not surprised. It was... It was, it, it was nice, isn't it? Yeah. To see that, that, like, to see my peers and all the people from when to come be like, yeah, we fucked with you, we love what you yeah. do, you as the man, oh, we love, like, dope. And you know what's different about your podcast? And Talk I, I me. messaged you before I even come on your podcast. Yes, you I, did. I, I, yes, I you DM'd did. you. Yes, you I did. I said, you know what? Your podcast, as you got to say, is that masculine shit. Yes. Because that was organic as well. Yeah, that weren't planned. That wasn't that planned, planned at all. Planned. Yeah, because I, I, I explained, right? My missus, she's mm. one of those, like, there's no bullshit. Mm. It's like, we'll, we'll argue and she'll mm. stand up for us. So that I can just, like, yo, she'll be giving it back to me. Mm. I was like, wait, this, this, this girl's taking me for a. Mm. After I watched the podcast, I'm like, I had to reclaim my authority, man. Yeah, said, <laughs> the said, podcast said, gives said, you that. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I'm here me? for that. I'm here for that. And then, so <laughs> it, it gives you that sort of masculine energy. Is mm. there a reason behind that that you, you thought that was lacking within that space? Do you know what it is? That's, again, pot luck, bro. Mm. Like, how, that's just how I've moved. Yeah. All my, that's how I move. I've been blessed to be raised up and come up around a certain masculine energy. Mm. Like, as I say, when I, as a teen, I was moving with big men. Like, I'd move with certain with men that was like, I'm 18, my, my bridge and them, half of my friends are my age. Yeah. The other half are men that's like 28, 30, da 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 da. So, I've always been around that. My family members that are older than me were real, like, old school stern. Yeah. You understand? So it's just an organic thing. But as for the podcast, it going away. Nah, that weren't planned. Mm. I remember the day I came to the thing. I was on my way. Doug's like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> I'm 20 minutes away from the yeah. thing. I'd seen something. I won't even say what it was at the time because I had to tackle. But I was like, just a lot of things I'd seen made me be like, you know what? Man, them are getting a bit too tied up in all of the mm. internet. And this. so I just said, we're going to do an episode of masculinity. Mm. And then through that episode, probably between the champagne and the henny, when I was dropping gems, I kept going, masculine shit, masculine shit. You understand? What happened to man doing this, that, the other? Masculine shit. So from then, the mantra kind of stuck. Yeah. But how I move genu generally as a man and the way I carry myself on a day-to-day, -day, I think a lot of people would probably perceive that as masculine energy in yeah. certain manly ways. So yeah, that it weren't a plan, it's just organic. That's me. Like, camera, off camera, you butt me. I'm the same all the time. Mm. You see what I'm trying to say? There's, it's not low imagery. I mean, so like, what's the what's the next steps with the podcast? Because we see, like, in America, mm. the touring it. I see the other day, um, no behaviour. I've done this. Shout shows. out to them. That was, I saw that. I saw that. That's, that's, in, like, that's I even, inspiring. I, like I message you also when you guys are doing one. We're we, definitely there. Yeah, we, do you yeah, feel yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Do you feel there's that energy that when you guys do it, that the man them are turning up? Well, do I think the man them will turn up if we do a show? Yeah, yeah the man them will turn up. Yeah. They will turn up for that, bro. So when, when, is it, when, when, when have we got any dates? Do you know what it is. I just yet? wanted or to get. I wanted to get out of this whole because everything was really unpredictable yeah. with all of this COVID stuff going on. You couldn't really make plans like that, mm. you know. And also, it's the building stage. Like, bear in mind, the pod's only been running ten months, so it all kind of tied in, and me just saying like, let's just keep building, but. As we move forward, 100% there'll be live shows. 100% that's on the agenda. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do those things. It's a must because there's demand for it. People are asking for it. So yeah, definitely. As I said, we just have to get out of this whole COVID. Like you just say, we've been let out now, so we can start looking towards that. But I can guarantee there'll be live shows and winners talking podcasts. Me and Doug just spoke about it. Doug just voice noted me when I was on my way here. Yeah. Just sent me a voice note of someone else asking him for live shows. Yeah. So it's obviously in the air. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? So yeah, that's a no-brainer, bro. That's a no-brainer, definitely. And I appreciate that you that you look out and say mm. things like that to me and be like, yeah, what about this, what about that? Because we have to brainstorm with each other. Mm. And what's kind of the, the next step for you as a person in terms of, aside from the podcast, like what, what, what can we look forward to from you? I've got a big project that I'm working on now that I can't really go into too, too much, but it's a big project um, that I'm putting some money behind, independent project again that you should, I'll be able to give you more information soon. 
I'm interviewing people and stuff and having meetings with people at the moment, but it will take people by surprise a piece because now that I'm, I'm, I try to stay active and now that the pod is structured to a point where, you know, it's kind of, we know what we're doing and everything, mm. I can slightly turn some attention to something else. So I'm, I've got some up and coming projects. I, I, I'm back on my shit. So yeah. once I'm rolling, uh, I'm always pushing. So I'm looking at some other things and we're going to just keep this keep this thing going, more momentum and more the same. You'll be seeing more of me. I'm not stopping, I'm, 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 on, I'm on it now. It's a, for me now, this is a legacy play right now. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, this is a legacy play. This is about legacy now. Mm. Just doing what doing what I want to do now at this stage. And you how know? your family kind of take into it, even your sons, I mean, there must be a word of podcast and you have to say certain things. I mean, when they're looking at it, how do you sort of navigate that? Um, when you say certain things, what do you mean? Like what? Like you might talk about things that may be of adult kind of nature. Adult nature, yeah. yeah. And they might... My little son, he's just not... My little son, he's just not allowed to watch any. He's a youth. Yeah. He's nine. He's not allowed to watch it. Uh, even my big son, he's big now, isn't it? it is what it is. We can't be hiding too much from them. If anything, you should watch it. Get local <laughs> educated. You know them ones? If anything, I tell him, watch it. Mm. See how a man moves like a man. See how a man that moves. That's what I tell him. You don't see the man that moves in a certain kind of way. Mm. You and, I, and he looks at me and I say, listen, you should listen to me, you know, because look, if general people are listening, a lot of people listen to me, bro, so I must be doing something right. You yeah. understand? So, so there's certain gems in there, that, of course, for him to take. But he, it's like my, my brother. I've got another brother. Yeah. He sits in the podcast and then he says to me, because like I say, them men were like my sons because they were a bit younger than me and we were latchkey kids, innit? Yeah. Like, I'd pick them up from school. You know mm. the vibes. I'd pick them up from school, make them food, come in. Our parents are out working yeah. all hours. So he says to me, sits in the podcast and says, it's funny that you're dropping these gems in the podcast because this is all I've heard you telling me all my life. This mm. is light. You ain't, this is light. You're not even going deep. Like, how, what you do say, this is mm. just how I talk. So with my son, I think he's heard a lot of it already to certain things and now it's just, well, I see it. What I like about this, is, which, which is nice, is my sons are getting to see a deeper understanding of who I am and what I represent mm. to the culture, which is which I enjoy. Because mm. it's all good sitting there saying, you know what, son, back in the day, you know, man, that's all good. Yeah. But when they see people that they might look up to, saying, well, you know what, we respect you, P, and this, that, that. Mm. That's, that's nice, I, I like that. So there's, there's, so there's a good side to it, yeah. There's a good and side even, to I it. guess, also in regards to... Because you're one of them, Bobby. Don't yeah. think you're not one of them. No, no, I'm them. Man. You're one of them that they look up to, you know. No, I appreciate it, man. I'm I telling you, like, it. enough of my, um, my son's school friends, they watch you regular, bro. No, I like, I remember, it, see when I did that first Masculine Shit episode, mm. you did a little video and you said, um, I don't totally agree with mm. what Poundstone has said, da, 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 and you said about mental health. And my son come, I remember I was laying, my son come in the bedroom. Dad, look. And I looked at it and I said, yeah, he's, he's, I said to him, son, yeah, that's his, his opinion. Mm. And I, I was glad for that because I want the man to see that we can have differences of opinion. No, I didn't even say, I said, um, is, is what I'm saying is being kind of, because what it is in that context, people took it as me saying like, oh, you shouldn't cry, mm. this, that, that. But what I wasn't actually saying that. What I was saying was keep some things for private, don't yeah. cry in the public. Mm. So when you said like, I don't totally agree with Pound Sterling, and you were like, we're men in it. So I know mm. when someone's being respectful in how they're mm. talking. And I, and I got that. So I was saying to him like, no, he's just saying his opinion, son, this, that, that, other. Like, it's no issue. He's, he's saying it respectfully. Yeah. And men should be able to have different opinions on things. Mm. The man's been here and said, I don't totally agree. And, and I love that, bro. Mm. But they was watching you already. You see what I'm trying to say? Man come in, oh, my Bridget Raymond just sent it to me. Yeah. You understand? So that's what I'm saying. You're another one, bro. Don't think, you, you know anyway, but you, so watch, you're popular. You're big out here, bro. Yeah, trying, you're big man. out here. We're trying, we're trying. No, no, all, all credit and all respect. You're big out here, bro. Don't get, I was watching, I was watching your shit. I was watching all your stories I and this kind of thing. Bro. And I, I'm not one of them guys that won't say it in front of you. I was watching your stuff, bro. I was watching, um, like I said to you before, we was on cameras rolling. I was watching all the stories and mm. st that, that you would tell. I was laughing and being like, yeah, I, I, I get that. I understand. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And last, just before we end, like, also just in regards to your motivational uh, in the car on Instagram. The one minute things. Yeah, it's like, that's becoming its own thing as well. Is that something that you sort of say, yeah, I'm going to do this because it's something I want to do as, as another part of Pound Sterling? Yeah, I think, I think that one there has just come, again, organically, bro. It's just... 
this is how I've always talked. Mm. When I was 18, I was talking like this. When I was 20, I was talking like this. When I was 18, my uncle used to cuss at his brethren and say, why the fuck are you listening to my nephew for? Because mm. they're big men, but they're coming to ask mm. me. Like, what, what, what are you saying, General? What, what, what do you think should... You understand? Mm. So I would always talk that motivational talk. You understand? So now... As I said, it's a legacy place. So I'm just letting it, I'm letting it flow, bro. This is just how I talk on a daily. You might catch me talking to one of my dogs. This is how I talk. I might voice note you one day and say, mm. Bobby, come on, let's get it. So let's not hold back on it. Like, yeah. unless, like a lot's going on out there that's messed up. So if I can just share some stuff as I just be doing what I'm doing, yeah, I just lay it off, bro. So yeah, it's just part of it now, bro. It's part of it. And it's not like I'm going to run out of things to say. It's just life, isn't it? No, and that was it guys, Big Eagle Media, and there you had a winner talking. Yeah, Count Sterling, done. <laughs>